Thank you very much, and I, yes, I will take you uh, to 100 years ago, more than 100 years ago, to talk about community acquired pneumonia, what have we learned over the 100 years. Uh, so I don't know what, ah. So these uh, two gentlemen that I want to present to you uh, on the left side is uh, Alfonso uh, Ramon Duches. He's uh, originally from uh, California, but he moved to uh, Rockefeller, and he met uh, his colleague, Oswald uh, Theodore Ivory, that came from Canada. Uh, the first one is immunologist. The second one is uh, more of a bacteriologist, but this was 100 years ago. They just worked together for many, many years. And they work on uh, different bacteria and different viruses. And uh, the first article that uh, inspired me, and I'll show you afterwards, how it inspired the, me and, and my group and probably others worldwide. Uh, so on the right side, they wrote a paper, var uh, Varieties in Pneumococcus and the Relation to Lobar Pneumonia. And on the left side, the occurrence of uh, carries of disease pot uh, producing types of Pneumococcus. And uh, the first article, they were looking in two consecutive years on a patient with uh, Lobar Pneumonia. Uh, at that time, they knew only on four different uh, types of pneumococcus, one and two that are still existing. The third one, which is well-known, so type three, which they call mucosus. And the fourth one are all the others. It's right now, we know that there are more than 100 of them. And they were looking which are the most common one, and they found in these two years that uh, type one and type two were the most common. But they uh, also stated it is not so easy to differentiate the pathogenic from the non-pathogenic forms. So they did another study. And in this study, it was a case control kind of study looking on the sputum of a normal individual versus uh, those with lobar pneumonia. What they found that uh, cell type one, they found it 13 times more in those with lobar pneumonia and the cell type two in up to five times more. So they said that these are probably the pneumonia serotypes. In that uh, article, they also stated that uh, cell type 3 was the one who had the highest mortality rate. So it's more a uh, severe disease. So this inspired me, and uh, 100 years later, I thought that I'm uh, inventing the wheel. Uh, and I did a, a, we did a study with uh, children with alveolar pneumonia. And we did the same study, actually. Uh, we took nasopharyngeal cultures from uh, children uh, and we compare them to children, healthy children. So on the uh, y-axis, you can see those uh, with pneumonia and on the x-axis, uh, normal uh, uh, children less than five years of age. And in the everything on the, uh, above the dotted line are those who are pneumonia serotypes and uh, all the reds are those who are significant. And you can see on the left upper side, same serotype one, 19 times more. So we call them the pneumonia serotypes. Now we have more of them but the same uh, uh, story as 100 years before. So we ask ourselves, are there differences in the clinical uh, aspect of in, in the laboratory between those uh, serotypes and the, the uh, pneumonia serotypes versus the others? To make a, a long uh, story short, uh, those with the pneumonia serotypes were older, more with intense uh, uh, systemic inflammatory response, uh, had lower proportion of comorbidity, hypoxemia, and viral detection. So we did a, a, another study looking uh, 